is a left-handed female bike commuter who makes her own yogurt. She's just your average Ann Arborite. Please welcome Nancy Shore. So in my day job at the Ann Arbor Area Transportation Authority, I encourage people to walk, bike, bus, and carpool to work. As a result, people often say to me, you know, I'd like to not drive as much, but... So they kind of confess their commuting sins to me, and I'm kind of like the commuting pope. <laughs> well, you know what? The pope has a lot of power, so I'm going to claim that. And as the commuting pope, I hereby issue three proclamations to make commuting better for all of us. Why? Well, in many ways, drive alone commuting is kind of like junk food. It's fast, it's convenient, and it's easy. But like junk food, drive alone commuting has disastrous impacts on our health, our well-being, and our communities. So let's get to those proclamations. Proclamation one, every celebrity needs a holiday, right? So I proclaim we make World Car Free Day in Ann Arbor the biggest and best of its kind. This is what it's like in Vancouver, Canada. We gotta be able to do better than that, guys, right? It would happen on a weekday, of course, and on the day before, we'd walk around to everybody's house and we'd take their keys. That includes the mayor, members of city council, and other decision makers. Now, we are a progressive community, so some people, this wouldn't be a problem, but for those who have never tried it before, this would be a day to give up giving excuses and actually try and see what's awesome and awful about our transportation system. Now, I have some personal experience with this because we are a one-car family by choice, and there are times when I have to make the six-mile commute to pick up my son from daycare and my daughter from school on my bike. And there's some really awesome things about that, but there are also some challenging things about that. But hey, this being a holiday, we have to celebrate in true Ann Arbor style. So at the end of the day, we shut down Main Street, we bring out the puppets, music by Matthew Altruda, and of course, a community conversation at Liberty Plaza to think about next steps. Right. So my second proclamation. My second proclamation, I think, would be the most impactful and the most radical, and that would be the end of practice we have here, something that is horrible and bad, but we all think it's good, we take it for granted, and that, of course, is free parking. That's right. I said it. I proclaim the end to free parking in Ann Arbor. Now, hear me out here. I've checked, and the right to free parking is not outlined in the Declaration of Independence. It's a commodity, just like buying shoes and getting coffee. Plus, we know that people's driving behavior changes when gas prices increase. So there's clearly a cause and effect between cost and driving. And think about the benefits. If we actually ask people to pay for parking at schools, at public institutions, at shopping places, we actually might be able to raise money for more things like buses and bike lanes and maybe even raises for people. Who knows? It's crazy. And also think about this. If people actually started to make real decisions about am I going to drive those two miles or am I going to walk, then we actually might be able to free up some of the space in our community, not have as much parking, and actually have other things like housing. Which leads me to my third and final proclamation, which is that we need to create a live near your work department at City Hall. Now, I am as big of a fan of rail as anybody, but in the work that we've done, I have seen that if you want to get people to drive less, you have to get them to live closer to where they work. How close? In the studies we've conducted, there's about a three to four mile sweet spot between when people actually use alternatives and when they don't. The problem? Our jobs and housing equation in Ann Arbor is severely out of whack. We've got way more people coming into this community than we have housing to support them. And that's just gonna get worse. I know a lot of smart people are working on this issue. I just feel like this department could help solidify some of the solutions. So the department would look at real carrots and sticks, things like mortgage incentives, rent incentives, free bus passes, ways to disincentivize people from living further out. And of course, especially focus on what has been a hot topic these days, which is that workforce housing. So we gotta get more housing in our community to help guys like this who work at Cafe Zola be able to live in this community and work here and enjoy the benefits as well. So why are we gonna do any of this? Well, as all a lot of us know, if you get yourself off junk food, you're happier, you're healthier. The same thing is true when people are able to stop driving as much and actually be able to walk and bike. It's life changing. I have seen it happen and I want more people to understand those benefits and have that benefit. So 
the commuting pope has spoken. <laughs> I hope I have instilled just the right amount of commuting guilt in all of you to think a little bit differently about transportation. And yes, I will be here later if anybody needs to make a confession. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks, Nancy. Thank Thank you, Nancy.